Hi there, it's Robert here. And one thing I'm really keen to do is to engage students in learning. And one way to do it is to create engaging lecture content. Today I'll be talking about how I use green screens and teleprompters to do this. But before we do, one thing we probably need to concede is that lectures aren't necessarily interesting in and of themselves. But imagine a lecture where all the students turn up and the slides and everything are up there, but instead of a lecturer turning up, you've got a tape recording of a lecturer turning up. Uh, but just the audio part of it, not even the video part of it. And miraculously, the, when you press play, the, the sound and the, the slides move at the same time, but you, you miss all that personal interaction of, of someone talking, all those visual cues and that communication that's happening there. I don't think many students will turn up the following week. Well, that's a little bit like how sometimes lectures are taken online where you've got PowerPoint slides with a, just a voiceover over them. Now, granted, these, this way makes it super easy to uh, do editing, and it doesn't matter if someone knocks on your door, you can easily cut that segment out of it. But they leave a, the audience a lot more disengaged and bored. You don't have any body language of your presenter there that's actually talking. And the sort of visual cues you get with people's mannerisms and how they look and things like that are completely lost. I've found research to indicate that having a, a human face on there is actually really useful in that, um, to get some of that body language and that interaction that students wouldn't otherwise have. So uh, I do it in, in this form where I superimpose my, myself over lecture slides um, and have a chroma key background. And basically that means there's a background that I can remove. Um, you can do it also just having a box and yourself recorded in um, whatever environment you want to be recorded in with bookshelves or whatever in the back. Uh, I think this looks a bit cleaner and you can kind of uh, impose yourself over the background and, and, and have, um, have some of that area around you taken up. Now in terms of equipment, I use a digital SLR, you can use a HD web camera or something like that, and a good quality microphone because you want decent quality audio. It's really hard to listen to it if it doesn't sound any good at all. In terms of video editing software, there's a lot out there. There's the Adobe uh, so software, Adobe Premieres, there's DaVinci Resolves. Uh, I use Camtasia, it's, it's relatively inexpensive uh, and really low learning curve compared to the others. I also use a teleprompter, and a teleprompter is basically a, a piece of glass positioned over a monitor, and the camera records through that, and you're standing on the other side. And the beauty of it is you can see what's reflected onto that glass, what, which is on the monitor, but the camera behind it can't see, and you're looking straight at the camera, effectively looking at what's on the glass. Now, I just throw up my lecture slides on there so I can see what I'm meant to be talking about. I can talk to them as I would normally in a, a lecture environment. Um, you also need some good lighting for this, particularly so that your backdrop is evenly lit. And I use a painted wall, so my wall's painted green with a special green paint. But you can also use a, a green cloth that's got the right chroma key color to it as well. This gives you a picture of uh, what the setup looks like, and it's relatively easy to set up in an office or in any sort of environment. Now, obviously, you want to avoid a few things like wearing green because you kind of just disappear if you do so, uh, but those things come with a bit of practice. Well, what about student satisfaction? Uh, when I first went down this path about four years ago, um, a lot of people thought, well, students will hate this, it will be boring for them, they'll disengage all the more. Uh, but what I found is student satisfaction hasn't dropped really at all. Um, it's been a bit lower this year because students haven't had the experience in the labs and things like that, which is a really valuable experience. Having said that, it needs to be done well. And just like in-person lectures can be done poorly or well, uh, online lectures can be done poorly or well. So the next few slides, I'll give you a few pointers of, of how to do it well. Uh, one thing is, uh, rather than uh, having really long lectures, like a two-hour lecture, what I do is I break it up into smaller blocks, like 10 minute chunks or five minute chunks. Basically, you can explain a concept and then have maybe one or two or three uh, videos that are examples of that concept and then explain a new concept and one or two or three examples around that concept. It forces you to uh, break the concept down and, and think through the logical components within that concept. And so typically each week I have a different theme and um, that theme will, will touch on a whole bunch of different concepts and join them all together. Uh, in terms of uh, some more tips to deliver, I've talked about the microphone and I've talked about um, Camtasia. 
One thing to note with all this editing and things like that, it gets faster as you go. Um, one thing to note also is the engaging element of it. Re remember we're competing against the likes of Facebook and the, the Mark Robers on YouTube. We want to keep our uh, video content and our, our lectures engaging so that students actually want to watch them and, and learn something from them. I've talked about keeping them short, but also keeping them valuable so that they could get more information from your lectures watching them than they would just by actually flipping through your lecture notes quickly and reading what you've written down there. I've also talked about the structure. And one final little tip that I use often is I put blanks in sections of my lecture notes. So the lecture notes that I give to students in PDFs or printed form, I, I put sections on, put white boxes over sections of them so they can't see it. They don't know what's underneath there. So if they want a full set of notes, and most students do, um, they actually have to watch your lectures. And when they watch the lectures, they can scribble down the answers. One thing I've found that the odd time I forgot to do this, I've actually got complaints from students saying, Oh, I didn't watch your lectures as detailed this week because you didn't you didn't blank out parts of it like you normally do. Hopefully there's a few tips in there um, that will help in creating lecture content that's engaging for students.